Is everyone in North Dakota lonely? Is everyone in North Dakota bored? Seriously, what the hell is there to do in North Dakota? We're gonna talk about that and a whole lot more. So grab your hockey sticks and your fishing poles. We're gonna unbox the state of North Dakota. Hey, look at that. This is an oil field. These guys are working hard to get all that good black stuff out of the ground. We're here in western North Dakota in the Bakken oil fields, which are kind of a big deal in these parts. Western North Dakota has the third biggest oil field in the U.S. and the biggest one outside of Texas. The oil business has been a big deal for North Dakotans. It brought in people from all over the world and caused a big spike in real estate. And it also brought this state riches. I mean, at one point, they were making $56 million a day in oil pulled out of North Dakota's lands. However, the oil boom here has had mixed results, and now that it's peaked, folks are looking around at each other and wondering if it was worth it. We'll talk more about that later. I mean, there's a lot more to North Dakota than just some old oil fields and macho men walking around. North Dakota's sort of diverse and sort of interesting. If you were thinking about moving here, you should sort of know what you're getting yourself into. This is North Dakota. At first glance, it's pretty clear that most of the activity in this state goes on in the eastern half. Many people have said, based on the geography in this part of the country, they should have made a western Dakota and an eastern Dakota, not a north and south Dakota. But that's the way they split the states up. There's nothing we can do about it now, can we? Now we're going to begin down here in southern North Dakota, and then work our way around the state. Down here in southern North Dakota, it's going to be much like the rest of the state. A bunch of small towns, wide open spaces, and a big city sprinkled in. You could kind of divide the southern part of the state by everything I-94 and south. Most of the bigger small towns lie along I-94. There's a big area down here, kind of south of Bismarck, that's a bunch of small German Catholic towns, or German, because German people say it like that. Half of North Dakota's whole population has German roots. And there's more German spoken here than any other language outside of English. There's more German spoken here than Spanish, though that's likely going to change at some point. Many people here are descendants of German Russians who came here in the late 1800s. Wishik is an example of one of these old German towns. There's a thousand people here. They still hold German fests here every year and a lot of people still make sausages. A lot of the Germans moved here from Russia in the late 1800s and they loved this state because it reminded them of Russia's landscape. It's all flat prairie and no trees. Because of the German influence, you're going to find a lot of people in North Dakota eat Nifla and Fleischkukla. That's German food. But North Dakotans have a lot of Norwegian and Swede in their blood too, so their taste of food has a heavy European influence. Other state favorites include Ludafisk and Strudels. They also invented their own food, stuff like caramel rolls, sloppy joes, and hot dish, which is basically just leftovers thrown together into a messy pile. They also put a lot of cheese and gravy on everything here because it sucks to be skinny in North Dakota. It's because of all the cold wind. Even North Dakota's capital, Bismarck, can't deny its heritage. The city of Bismarck was named after Otto van Bismarck, a big shot in the German Empire in the late 1800s. There's 74,000 people in Bismarck, making it the second biggest city in this fine state. It's one of the fastest growing small cities in the country, too. They've added 20,000 people to the city's population over the last decade, but much of that growth was due to the oil boom, which peaked years ago. More on that later. They make a lot of big decisions here at the state capitol. Like August 30th is the official state holiday for Mr. Bubble. That's right, Mr. Bubble has his own official holiday here. If that gives you an idea of the type of small town stuff that happens in these parts, Mr. Bubble was invented in this state. I'm actually surprised Mr. Bubble hasn't become just bubble with all the cancel culture gender neutral crap going on all over this country. Folks here lead a normal life. The average household incomes are about average, but the cost of living is super low here. Like you can get a house like this for about 250 grand. It's just a quiet, mostly safe, but kind of boring small town. There really aren't any nice parts of Bismarck, nor are there really any bad parts of town. However, on the west side of town is the Missouri River, and the Missouri River separates Bismarck from Mandan, which is right next door. There's 23,000 people in Mandan. It's much more run down and poor, and there's a lot more drug use on this side of the river. If you move to the state capital region, put your roots down east of the Missouri River. Jamestown is the smallest community here along I-94. There's about 23,000 people here, too. 
It's been called the worst place you can live in the state when you measure crime and poverty and quality of life. There's a lot of meth use here, and it's pretty run down and dirty in many areas. Valley City, also along I-94, is also a sketchy place in many parts of town too. Do not plan to raise a family in these two cities if you move here. But keep in mind, bad for North Dakota would be awesome for some of the worst areas of our country in comparison. Jamestown does have the world's largest buffalo statue, so that's cool. It's proof that people will stop and see the world's largest anything in this country. And by the way, buffalo is what we call the American bison. So buffalo and bison are kind of the same thing. Kind of. Wait, that's not all, people. There's other amazing sights to see in North Dakota. Over here is the Enchanted Highway, which is a 32-mile stretch of road with a bunch of scrap metal sculptures everywhere. And then there's the world's largest Holstein cow up here in New Salem. Yay, North Dakota! Most of the rest of southern North Dakota is small towns and farms. Lots and lots of corn and wheat. It's a big deal for North Dakota's economy, farming is, but you probably knew that already. Much of North Dakota's countryside. There's a joke they call this the Lone Tree State. And no, the state tree is not the telephone pole. That's so mean. It's pretty up here. Come on. But you want to know how small this state is? Here's the area code map for North Dakota. It's all 701. It's very remote and desolate and cold and sparsely populated here. Most mornings, the sun comes up. Most evenings, the sun goes down. It's so flat and remote down here that Highway 46 here is the longest, straightest road in the nation. It's 31 miles long and not a single curve or bend in the road. My God. Before we leave this part of the state, it's worth discussing the Native Americans in North Dakota. Down here is one of four Native American reservations in North Dakota. This is Standing Rock, home to the Sioux. Everybody knows Standing Rock because of the big protests that happened here in 2016. That was a big deal. But you may not know the real story about what happened here. I'll tell it to you. The Native Americans here were approached by energy transfer partners who wanted to put a pipeline through their land. They offered them a bunch of money, which Standing Rock agreed to. Then the oil company changed its mind and rerouted the pipeline around the reservation. The Standing Rock leaders weren't too happy about that and they insisted the original route remain so they could get all their money. The oil company said no, and the Standing Rock leaders said, well, if you don't put the pipeline through our land, we're going to protest it. The oil company said, okay, do it. Well, that was a bad idea. The Standing Rock tribe used social media to draw in thousands of people who partied more than protested. It was a big headache for the people who lived nearby, and the protesters harassed cops and their families and made a big mess. The pipeline finally went through, and all the protesters who raised a bunch of GoFundMe money went back to California and Oregon and Washington and wherever else they came from. And here's what it looked like the day they left. They seriously burned buildings and left trash and oil and all sorts of dangerous chemicals in the very river they were supposed to be quote unquote protecting. Yeah, they didn't teach you that in oil protest history, did they? But it's the truth. I know, because I was there. And over here is Western North Dakota. Earlier I mentioned how this state's very different west to east. The western half of the state is more rugged and hilly. The culture here is rednecky cowboy, and most of this side of the state's dominated by the oil industry. It's a plains state, but this part of North Dakota makes it feel like a western state too. Theodore Roosevelt State Park is down here. This is where you can see some of North Dakota's badlands, which is an area carved out by moving water like a billion years ago. Most of the badlands are in South Dakota, but North Dakota has some. There's also bison here. It's pretty darn cold in North Dakota. While summers can be really hot, it's going to be plenty of snow, ice, and freezing windy days that are well below zero. It'll go on for months up here. If you've never felt a cold North Dakota windy winter day, it's enough to make you want to pack up your stuff and leave. Weather.com called North Dakota the toughest weather state of all. But for fun, you can ice fish at Lake Sakakawea. This massive lake is well loved and appreciated by North Dakotans. Lake cabins are a pretty big deal in this part of the state, and hunting and fishing are a big deal up here too. But it's the energy sector that's the biggest deal in these parts. Don't tell Russia, but there's a lot of nuclear warheads stuck in the ground in western North Dakota. In fact, if North Dakota was its own country, it would be the third biggest nuclear power of all countries. Some of these nukes are up in Minot, but a third of them are way out here, under the Bakken oil fields. And oil is what we're going to talk about next. You could say North Dakota has been blessed and cursed for having such a big oil field under their feet. Much of western North Dakota is a bunch of old west, modernized, a lot of dust and hustle and bustle. Oil has been a roller coaster ride for everyone involved in this part of the state. 
An example of this is the formerly small and peaceful city of Williston. This place was an unassuming, quiet place before the oil boom, and now it's a really bad place to live. Dickinson is, too. Like many of North Dakota's smallish towns along the Bakken region, these places were crowded, but now they're empty. They were safe and humble, and now they're dangerous and wealthy. A lot of people live in North Dakota to get away from the people, but then the people came to them. Between 2010 and 2015, oil prices soared, so they pumped out as much oil as they could here, making North Dakota the second leading oil producing state. Man camps sprang up everywhere. There was a huge uptick in crime, prostitution, illegal drugs, traffic, pollution, and noise. Local businesses thrived, but bars saw fights just about every night. Kids couldn't play outside. A lot of the people who flocked here were down on their luck drifters who didn't want to be part of these communities because they were temporary. Home prices soared and they couldn't build homes fast enough. Because of all the people who flocked here, North Dakota now has the highest percentage of 20 to 24 year olds in the country and is one of the few states that's getting younger. Or was. It's kind of hard to tell because when oil prices plummeted in 2017, boom went to bust. And now things aren't the same here anymore. I mean, at one point, North Dakota was the eighth fastest growing state, and it led the nation in most new millionaires per capita, too. Today, its population growth is back down to a trickle. Many of the areas around here are pumping out far less oil, and many of the workers have left, off to search for another short-term career. But with every boom, there's a bust. They knew it was coming. There was some good that came out of the oil boom here. While the rest of the nation was in a housing crisis, North Dakota wasn't. There were modern improvements to the area infrastructure, and all the new people coming in added to the state's diversity, though I don't know if North Dakotans are happy about that. Today, North Dakota still remains the 10th whitest state, where 82% of residents are white. There's no going back to the way things once were here. No, this part of the state's forever changed. The oil's not going anywhere, so if there's another price spike, you can bet everyone's coming back. But for now, the state's looked at taking advantage of its other resource, wind. North Dakota is the fifth leading producer of wind energy, and there's a bright future for wind here. Will North Dakota see a wind boom? Perhaps. You can't teach toughness. You're either born a willow or you're born an oak. Many people in northern North Dakota were born oaks. Way up here near the Canadian border, the folks are hardy. Most North Dakotans are hardworking, lend-a-hand types, and due to the unforgiving environment up here, they're very self-reliant. I mean, there's a reason they call this the Rough Rider State. This is where men drive pickups, not those plug-in toys you see all over the highways. There isn't much to do here for fun in many parts of North Dakota like this, way up near Canada. So young people turn to sex, drugs, and gambling. However, those who are motivated will snowmobile, pheasant hunt, ice fish, or rodeo. Hockey is huge in this state. Or you could join the Lawn Mowing Racing Association. Yes, that's the thing here. There's a Lawn Mowing Racing Association. They call themselves America's Grassroots Motorsport, and they even have a website. Let's mow.com. How clever. But if you don't have a hankering for racing your lawnmower around, you can just drink. North Dakotans seem to always be drunk, and the residents have a tendency to drive drunk often. The state is regularly on one list or another for drunk estates. If you move here, you'd find the bars are your best chance for a social life. Every small town in these parts has a bar in town, as well as a church. You're likely going to have a subway, and a Dairy Queen, and a pizza place, and a gas station with decent Mexican food. If you're lucky, you'll have a Walmart nearby, but who needs shopping when you have Amazon? You can find your car online, and even your girlfriend online. Yes, she's real, and of course she loves guys from North Dakota. Come on now. Politics-wise, North Dakota's very red, though less so as more people move up to the state. Up here is Roulette County, which has an Indian reservation on it. It's pretty much the only part of the state that voted liberal as a majority. Down here is the Indian reservation we talked about earlier. This is where the Turtle Mountains are. At just over 1,000 feet, this region is the highest point in the state. Look at them, thar hills. For perspective, the least populated place in this whole state is a place called Mesa, here near Devil's Lake. There's five people here, and I don't know where they are. Oh, there's one. The only other real interesting place up here worth discussing is Minot. It's home to a big Air Force base, so many people come here just for that. You could move here too, even if you aren't in the Air Force. Why not Minot? Now we move all the way over to the eastern side of North Dakota. The culture of the eastern side of the state is much more progressive than the western half, and this is where there's many more modern jobs beyond oil and gas. Here it's much flatter, too. If western North Dakota feels like Montana or Wyoming, the eastern half of the state feels more like Minnesota. 
There's two smallish cities here and a bunch of agriculture. The Red River Valley here is a very fertile area, so there's a lot of farms. Potatoes and sunflowers are a big deal, as are sugar beets. Sugar beets are piled up in a big stinky mounds and left to rot until they can be turned into, well, sugar. 90% of North Dakota's farmland. That's kind of a hard number to grasp. Grand Forks is here. It's a college town, home to the University of North Dakota. Their mascot used to be called the Sioux, but, you know, cancel culture. Now they're the Hawks. Not too many people in the state like that name. But they do love UND hockey. They're always good, and it gives North Dakota something exciting to watch while they're all cooped up inside during the long winters. North Dakota doesn't have a professional sports team, so you either cheer on UND hockey, North Dakota State football, Go Bison! Or you cheer for Minnesota sports teams. There's 56,000 people here in Grand Forks, which makes it a big city in this state. It's more dangerous than most of the rest of the state, and it's going to be more expensive here than most places you can pick from. It's a nice enough place with a lot of college kids and military people. There's really not a lot to do here except drink and watch hockey, but that's North Dakota for you. And then you have the biggest city in the state, Fargo. Everybody knows Fargo, but it's not this Fargo. Thanks a bunch. So what's the deal now? Gary says triple homicide? Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Two of them are over here. That movie was called Fargo, but was based in Minnesota, don't you know? If there's going to be wealthy, educated, and successful people, they're most likely going to be here in Fargo. This place is growing pretty fast, though less fast since the oil boom ended. But it has the economic diversity and a robust economy to support new growth. Land prices have gone up faster here than anywhere else in the upper Midwest. People used to move to Minnesota when they graduated from NDSU, but more people are choosing to stay these days, which helps fuel the population growth. There's some technology companies here. It's home to one of Microsoft's biggest corporate offices outside of Seattle. Nokia also has a presence. And just like the rest of eastern North Dakota, agriculture is a big deal in the surrounding areas, though farming is less important to the economy here than it once was. If you want diversity and culture and entertainment, clearly this is where you'd want to be. A big part of the population growth is taking place here in West Fargo, but some of the newer, nicer areas that are safest are on the south part of town. But it's still a great place to raise a family all around, and one that's desirable for people looking to get away from the BS. Some people might find it boring, but it's boring in a good way. North Dakota is a nice, quiet place with a lot of genuine people. Folks here are generally very level-headed, they're compassionate, and somewhat open-minded, but mostly with one another. People here like to do the same stuff most people in the country like to do. Hang out with friends, drink, be outside, take in some culture, and have sex. Some of these things are harder to find than others. Crime remains lower than the nation's average, and the harsh weather means a lot of criminals and homeless folks won't venture this far north, at least not in large numbers. North Dakotans are proud of their state, and they want you to come if you can behave. But that's a lot to expect out of many Americans these days. It'll be interesting to see how this state continues to grow and evolve. Oil runs counter-cyclical to the national economy. When the economy does well, oil prices drop. But if this state wants to grow in a healthy way, it can't rely on oil forever. For many people in North Dakota, they're just fine with remaining a quiet, under-the-radar place. They'd rather have all this to themselves. Okay, so that was a pretty good look at North Dakota, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's a pretty nifty state and one of our last frontiers. And we could have talked about a lot of other stuff, too, about North Dakota. Actually, no, that's pretty much it. That's North Dakota for you. <laughs> Oofta! That smell means the sugar beets are ready to be put on the truck. So I better get back out to the fields now. All that oil in North Dakota It's underground in the middle of all of these fields Where a man can make his name But if you're dreaming about North Dakota It don't matter at all if you think you're tough Dakota's a brand new game. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. 
You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nix Manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. Let's get right to it. Tell me, tell me how uh, Williston uh, is the town that the the bust and boom. What 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 was it like before and during and now? Before, during, and now. Before it was always pretty quiet. You know, just everybody knew everybody. Um, I actually worked at a couple hotels in Williston when it, the boom hit. So I got to see a lot of craziness where it, it was, it was, it was nuts. No place for anybody to live. Um, we had like eight hotels at that time. People were sleeping in the conference rooms. People were tenting in parks just because there's all these people flooding here and no, nowhere for them to live. Um, and now, you know, it's still, we still have, we still got enough people here where the population it jumped um a lot of them went back home during a lot of them still will go back home during the winter but um yeah we still got a good portion of them around here though there's still jobs oil fields so like how crazy was it when you had all those people coming into town i hear there were fights i hear there were um traffic was bad i mean they i hear they kind of trashed your community um there for a few years is that, is that all accurate or no uh yeah i mean you're gonna have some of that stuff happen especially like the fighting with um about north dakota and how we can live here whichever but for the most part eh, and it, trashing the town you know it was just so much the town wasn't ready for it you know yeah, I don't know. That was cool. I, I don't know if I'd say trash though. So, people were living in their cars. They were trying to figure out where they were going to live. What what types of people were there coming into town um, who wanted those high paying short term jobs? Oh, they were coming from everywhere. You were just meeting. Um, I'm trying to think back hotel wise. It was hi guys. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I just had some distributors come in. That's you guys cool. should interview them. They go through, they go to all these towns around here. <laughs> I know, right? I'm on a it's... YouTube interview <laughs> about North Dakota. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, okay, my bad. Um, they pretty much from everywhere, though. You'd meet them from Texas, from just, you would see every state license plate in town. It was crazy. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, right. yeah everywhere yeah so did a lot of those people leave because you know the the oil prices went down they pretty much cut back on the production so where did everybody go a lot of them went back home and even when it was booming a lot of them um would leave during the winter they couldn't handle the winter so then there'd be more jobs open up because it was like nope can't do it um and some of them would come back after it warmed up but a lot of them would go back home though if they'd end up losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. Overall, would you, in your opinion, was the oil boom there good or bad overall? I know there's going to be good and bad with it, but if you had to pick, would you do it all over again? Or, I mean, you probably made a lot of money too working at the bar, right? Yep. Yep. Um, I personally would. Didn't bother me any. Um, it, yeah, there's definitely good and bad to it, but I would say bring it back. You know, it brought a lot more to our to our town where instead of, you know, eight restaurants, we have maybe like 30 now. <laughs> where yeah. We have a few choices, but I mean, we still only have a Walmart to shop at, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you're very, so you're on the, on the, on the pro side of, of all this. Cause I, I had heard a lot of people, I'd read interviews and saw people that were like, you know, too much, too fast. Like they came in, uh, you know, the oil boom came in and we couldn't handle it. And there was all this crime and they ruined our roads and they were just rude people that started fights. And then they left us here. And now we're trying to pick up the pieces, but you're like, not from that side. You're like, Hey, that was great. Like bring it on. Right. 
Yeah, bring it. Yeah, bring it on. Bring on the money, and that bring on the dudes. You know, back then it was like ten to one ratio from men to women. It was that was kind of intense. Where it was like, you know, all filled with uh, got uh, yeah, I can probably find you one. Um, where uh, that was kind of it was intimidating, but it was a good thing. He had choices, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So. Is there going to be another boom? You think when they're going to bring it all back and do it all over again? I don't know. I part of me hopes so, but um, I'm not sure. You talk to people; uh, some of them will tell you, "Yeah, it's coming back," and the other people will be like, "Hell no, it's not coming back." So, I yeah, it's hard to say. What all these people say when they came to North Dakota for the first time and came up there by you and were like. Okay, I'm here now. What was their opinion of your state? Um, I don't. I don't think they were happy with it. Like, I think a lot of people were, um, like, what, what, <laughs> where did I move to? Um, and then there's other people who think it's just absolutely beautiful here. But I think most of them were more shocked than anything. Like, there's nothing here but oil. <laughs> right. Well, there, there's you know, pretty girls too. Um, so There's how is some, huh? some. <laughs> some pretty girls, some manly women? So, um, how has the state changed? Did you grow up in North Dakota? Are you from there, born and raised? Yeah, so like looking back when you were a kid to now, how has your state changed in the last 30 years? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. It really hadn't changed probably that much until the boom hit. <laughs> we were all, you know, it was just still, I don't know. Everybody still thinks we ride horse and buggies around here, but, um, I really don't think it changed too much until, uh, the last boom that we had. And that was really the only one that I experienced. So I was too little for the, the one in the eighties, but. Um, I don't really feel like it's changed that much other than just being hit that fast and that hard with the oil and mm -hmm. seeing all, all that. Sorry. Yeah. I feel like I got too much green water on me. Yeah. A couple more quick questions. So do most of the people in Wilson, are they on your side where they're like, Hey, bring it on. Or are most people like too much too soon? Like that was crazy. Um, I think it's definitely 50, 50 where I think there's a lot of like business owners. Like I manage a bar here. Um, for us, it's like, bring it on, you know, we <laughs> bring it on. But yeah. as far as, yeah, some, like some of the locals, they're not too big of a fan of it, but. Yeah. They're yeah. going to get oil where they want to get oil. Right. Right. So are you going to leave? Like, are you sticking around North Dakota? What's your plan? Like, are you going to live there forever? Are you going to take off? Like, um, how do you feel about your state? Um, I love my state. I've seen so many people leave and it's like they come back because <laughs> there's a lot of good people here. I love the people here. And, you know, I come from a big family where um, like my family's all here. So I, I don't think I'll be going anywhere. I'll just go vacation and come back, you know? <laughs> yeah. How has, is North Dakota changing? Like, is it since you, I mean, I know you're still a young guy, but like, do you hear people talking about North Dakota being different now than before or what North Dakota is going to be like in the future? Well, um, obviously the, the oil starting to fade is going to, you know, affect our, uh, economy here. And, um, I've seen, I don't know. I know sometimes you put a stuff into politics in uh, in your videos, but North Dakota is like a, a very big Republican state. But I've started to see quite a f quite a few more like uh, liberal and like Democrat. A lot of people uh, more than I mean, obviously, I'm still young, but, you know, it's it's definitely noticeable, especially mm -hmm. like talking to the people in my family that are older and like what they say about it like there's definitely started to be a lot more uh people like that and then people like that so well, uh what is it like 
Are they moving there? I, I don't Where, that mean it's just I don't know. I think it's kind of more a lot to do with just the younger generation. Like, okay, so the kids or, growing up are growing up less Republican there, like they're yeah, they're more progressive. Just yeah. Okay. I, I definitely noticed that like obviously I went to school with the younger generation and yeah. I definitely it definitely seems to be a lot more uh liberals and Democrats than it was I don't know, ten years ago maybe. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't imagine very many liberals would move to North Dakota, unless they were going to school there. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, so you're saying that some of the young kids in North Dakota growing up are have more progressive views than previous generations. That's mm -hmm. what you're seeing. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Like, I think it's honestly, I think it's just the turn of the times. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I personally am more Republican, but I, I think it's just the younger generation and just the way things are going are just kind of starting to go more that direction. And I'm not really sure what specifically it is, but a lot of younger people think like that and are um, more liberal in their ways of thinking. And yeah. So um, I, I would imagine that people in North Dakota feel lucky that they live isolated from all of the BS that's going on in our major cities. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know the last time they had a, a riot there or. A yeah, there was, or... there was, there was this black lives matter protests, but they were, they were peaceful. Like there was no <laughs> burning of buildings or yeah. stuff like that. Um, but um, I lost my train of thought. What was yeah. that? Well, I mean, so like it, you're clearly in a in an island uh, in the country oh, yeah. that's far away from all the crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around, yeah. A lot of people take pride in living here, and they love living here just because they're so far away from like us. You no, know, the big, <laughs> the bigger cities, and you know, a lot right. of people. It, you go to small towns, and you'll see like a lot of people are really like old fashioned in their ways, and it's some of it. It's kind of like. A little bit scary because in in some of those small towns you know it's a lot of old people and the way they think and were raised is a lot different than this generation so you you find a, a, a lot of like homophobia like very like sh like strict homophobia and like even some racism some places yeah now, i myself have never witnessed anybody being racist to somebody else uh in north dakota but you know in the small towns I, I i know there's some people that are like old and they were raised like that and it's kind of sad but yeah so are you are you sticking around like you know you're you grew up in bismarck you're a young guy uh what's your plan are you gonna stay in north dakota you're gonna skip town and move move to another state what you, what's your what's your future look like out there you know, I, I currently live on my own and I, I do really like it here. I've been to, so if you take the U.S. and you cut it right in half from North Dakota, I've been to every state on the west half of that line, but only like two or three on the, on the east half. Mm -hmm. And so I've been to a lot of the cities on the west side and seeing them compared to what Bismarck is like, it's like, you know, maybe Bismarck isn't such a bad place because, you know, you live here and it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so boring. You know, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to see. But it's like at the same time, you know, you don't got to worry about walking out the front door and getting shot or, you know, the the, the cheaper parts of town here aren't like somewhere that you're going to have bullets coming through your walls. And I mean, you know, you kind of take that for granted living here and then you go to somewhere like a big city and you see all the homeless people and all that. And you're like, wow, there's not really a lot of that in Bismarck. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, you're lucky. They don't like the cold. No, they don't. And, and they don't like, you know, I'm sure your state doesn't give free handouts out like they do in other states. Not really. And I mean, you every once in a while you see it's not too uncommon to see someone, you know, standing on the on the corner at Walmart or on the interstate. uh exit uh, with a sign or whatever but i mean you don't really see a lot of homeless people like wandering around or under the bridges or stuff like that 
Yeah. So what about your friends? Like what's the consensus among people your age or the next generation of, I guess, North Dakotans, if you're sticking around, are a lot of your friends like liking it there or are, are they like trying to leave the state? Mm -hmm. Like what's the mentality there? You know, it's kind of mixed. Um, my, my closest friends, they're, one of them goes to school at NDSU in Fargo and the other goes to BSC here in Bismarck. And, um, as of now, they don't really have any plans to like leave the state. Um, unless my one friend were to find a job elsewhere, but he doesn't really, we don't really have any plans on leaving. Um, I know a few people who really don't like it here cause they're just more kind of like city life type people. Mm -hmm. And that is not North Dakota in the slightest. So, um, you know, they want to leave. And a lot of people my age especially get bored around here because it's, I mean, it's six and a half hours to the nearest city, Minneapolis. It's, uh, other than Theodore Roosevelt, it's probably six hours to the closest national park. Um, I mean. Yeah, I get you. I mean, I, for jobs, I mean, what, what are people going to do for a good job? besides oil yeah and that's also a reason you know people our population was rising 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 and then it kind of started to you know cap off yeah and once those oil field jobs start going away that's when people have to move away and that's when i think it's already started happening in williston and dickinson there's just a lot of vacant houses mm -hmm. um what about someone that goes to call like are there good opportunities for, for kids that, you know, that don't want to work in the oil fields or manufacturing that mm -hmm. go to college and not that those are bad jobs. They're very good, well-paying jobs actually probably pay more than a college graduate would make. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, say I'm a kid that grows up in, in North Dakota, I go to college and I want to stick around. Are, are, are there good tech healthcare education jobs? Oh, uh, there for seconds? tons of, um, well, I wouldn't say tons, but I mean, there's plenty of healthcare jobs around here. Uh, I know a, of a lot of people that have gone into the healthcare industry. Yeah. Um, agriculture is also a very big one around here. Um, a lot of my family is in agriculture. My mom grew up on the farm and my grandparents and uncle have a farm. And um, so that's, that's another big one. A lot of people will go to school for that or you know, maybe go, my aunt went to Nebraska for school for that and then came back. Um, other than that, I mean, there's not really, there's not really any huge brands that, you know, have a headquarters here. What's a one piece of advice you'd give somebody uh, that's thinking about moving to North Dakota besides the cold? Be, right. Cause that's the number one um, advice for somebody. Ooh. Just, I don't know. Be ready to have a good time. I hope you like beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 